The Red Death had long devastated the country. No pestilence has ever been so fatal or so hideous. Blood was its avatar and its seal, the redness of horror and blood. But the Prince Prospero was happy and dauntless and sagacious. When his dominions were half populated, he summoned his presence a thousand hale and lighted, light hearted friends from among the castle and names of his court. And with these, he retired to the deep seclusion of his castellated abbeys. And then the music ceased, as I have told, and the evolution of the waltzes were quieted, and there was an uneasy cessation of all things as before. Bong, like three. Bong, bong. Bong. Before the last echoes of the last chime had utterly sunk into silence, there were many individuals in the crowd who had found leisure to become aware of the presence of a masked figure which had arrested the attention of no single individual before. And now was acknowledged the president. <laughs> <laughs> Did you all wake from the dead? <laughs> <laughs> but from a certain nameless awe with which the mad assumptions of the mummer had inspired the whole party, there were found none who put forth hand to seize him, so that impeded he passed with a yard of the prince's person. And while the vast assembly, as if with one impulse, shrank from the centers of the room to the wall. He made his way in uninterruptedly, but with the same solemn and measured steps he had distinguished from the first. And now was acknowledged the presence of the Red Death. <laughs> he had come like a thief in the night, and one by one dropped the revelers in the blood-bedewed halls of their revel, and died each in the despairing posture of his fall. And the life of the ebony clock went out with that of the last of the gay. And the flames of the tripods expired, and darkness and decay and the red death held illimitable dominion over all. You gonna read it now? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come. Blooper.